Yes, natural glow. <laughs> makes mistakes right right and this has happened once before but I don't know why it really just kind of rubbed me wrong this time my neck was sweating child but what is the number one thing in aviation everybody's core values everything that you talk about right say it with me y'all safety safety is the number one core value or whatever you want to call it for pretty much any airline, and if it's not, you probably don't want to fly them if they're not worried about safety as their number one priority. So anyways, everybody's human. We're all entitled to make, an, to make a mistake and be forgiven, blah, 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 blah. But check this out. We are descending, and as flight attendants, once you... You know, flight attendants that watch, once you become a flight attendant, even if you're just a person that flies often, you your senses will kick in and you will become so aware of things on the aircraft that you would have never noticed if you were just a, you know, one time a year flyer. So, of course, you can feel the plane descending. You can hear certain noises that are normal, that are not normal, smells, you know, all kind of stuff. Your senses are really heightened on the aircraft just because you fly so often and you're used to things but so when we this is what usually happens when we're descending you know usually we fly anywhere between you know 34 to 36 thousand feet when we start descending you can feel it but we hit initial descent right around like depending on the day and the captain but technically around 20,000 feet 25,000 feet you hit initial descent which means flight attendants you know and customers kind of start preparing the cabin getting it in compliance right and once you hit 10,000 feet that means seat backs up tray tables up you know bags put away all that good stuff so what had happened was we are oh so let me let me set the scene for y'all the Wi-Fi had went out like a little bit before initial descent. So I guess when the Wi-Fi goes out, the maps on the TV goes out. And the maps is one of the ways that I can look at to see, you know, what altitude we're at. So I can kind of have an idea of what, you know, I need to be doing as far as like what phase of flight we're in. Um, I can also look at an app on my phone to see, but the Wi-Fi went out. So my app wasn't working and I didn't have time to kind of get it back up. And the seatbelt sign was off. So the captain dinged us one time, and that means, and turned on the seatbelt sign. So that's sign for initial descent. So I make my initial descent announcement. Um, and then, once again, I'm not, you know, we're not really just looking out windows all day. First of all, we have a little itty bitty circular window. So it's not like I just have a great view of 
where we are. Um, we're not sitting down and just watching the plane descend. You know, we're probably busy with whatever the customers want. So, you know, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Can't tell what altitude we're at. And, but I can tell we're going down, but that doesn't tell me much of nothing. Um, and I'm like, dang, I feel like we should be in final descent. And my F4 comes, you know, taking her sweet time up from the back. We had a deadheading pilot on board, a first officer. And she goes, yeah, um, the deadheader in the back just said that we're at 3,500 feet. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, but she said it like with no urgency, like nothing. So I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, you know, he's saying that the guys forgot to ding us. So I look out the window and lo and behold, there's trees right there. So I was like, holy crap. Anyways, long story short, um, we did the fastest compliance we could do. But by the time I made the, the final descent announcement, wheels were down. You know, wheels, wheels down means, you know, flight attendants need to be taking their seats. You know, there's no more us being up in the cabin, making sure everybody's seat backs and tray tables and bags are put away. Like, no. So I was just a little irritated because... My F2, who's supposed to sit in a different jump seat by her door, had to actually sit in the jump seat directly next to me, had glasses in her hand, you know, just because simply like you have to make smart decisions here, right? So either she's going to put the glasses up, try to run back to her jump seat and possibly still be standing up on landing, which is not safe, or just take the L, sit down in the closest jump seat you can get to and hold the glasses and that's what ended up happening anyway so i'm telling y'all this story because like i started off saying everybody's human everybody's entitled to making a mistake you know i'm not perfect i make mistakes every day but when you don't acknowledge them is when it irritates me so you know we land everything's good she's safe we you know we open our doors safely and correctly. Everything's fine. You know, everything ended up being fine. So it's not, I'm tilting on the phone, sorry y'all. It's not life or death. Well, kind of, but we survived, right? So pilot comes out, the captain, and goes into the lavatory, and I'm looking at him. And then the first officer comes out. You know, he's greeting customers. And I'm, have a great day. Thank you for choosing blah, 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 airlines. Mm-hmm, great. And I'm just, I'm just waiting for one of them to just acknowledge the fact that they forgot to do a very big safety procedure, right? Like, come on now. So I turned to the first officer and I said, y'all forgot to ding us. I was, I was irritated. Y'all forgot to ding us. I said, we landed with glasses in our laps and not in the correct jump seats, right? So which, which is bad enough in itself. God forbid we landed, you know, and we skid off the runway. Now my F2 isn't in her direct jump seat to be able to open her doors. You know, like, you know, there's little itty bitty things that can happen when you just miss one, when you make one mistake. So he goes, <laughs> the first time figure sir goes, that wasn't me, that was the captain. And he feels really bad about it. And I'm like, does he? Because he ain't saying nothing to me. You know, I'm standing right here. Ask me if I'm good. You know, just acknowledge it. You don't, I don't even need you to apologize. Just acknowledge it. So he comes out the bathroom. I said, you forgot to ding us. He goes, I know I'm already beating myself up. You know, he's like, I feel so bad. He's like, I realized once we were in the flight deck. And they can't call us, you know, like once we're at a certain amount of feet, you know, um, it's uh, terms are slipping my brain. Once we're at a certain amount of feet, you know, there's, there really shouldn't be any contact between the flight deck and the the rest of the cab and the crew because, you know, they need to be focusing on what they're focusing on, unless it's a real emergency. So I'm not going to call him and be like, where are we at? You know, like, whatever. You just have to use your senses. So he's just like, oh, I feel really bad. He's like, I realize once we got to here, blah, blah, blah. But of course they're doing, they're doing what they need to do to get us on the ground safely. So cool. It's, that's not first priority no more. But anyways, y'all, just... Just wanted to vent, get that off my chest. All the lovely things that you'll be able to go through once you become in flight, or if you are in flight, you already feel me on this because those pilots, not all of them, I won't stereotype all of them, I wouldn't dare, 
But a lot of them, they think they're God. And, you know, they get so close up in the air to Jesus, they just forget that they're not him. So, <laughs> anyways, I am here in LAX. Um, I called my friend Candice. Probably going to just go hang out with her for a little bit. This is a early morning trip. Well, we started today at 12, but the rest of the, the next three days are early morning reports. So, I have a 7 a.m. report to the airport tomorrow. So, probably won't do much of nothing. Just kind of hang out and chill and catch up with her. So, I'll see y'all later. Good morning. It is early. 5.17, but it's West Coast time. Um, we have a shuttle pickup of 6.30. I'm tight y'all this morning our flight we go to um where are we going fort lauderdale so what i'm doing right now is just being a good f1 and um f1 is like for those of you that are new to my videos if you're new to my videos hey welcome um thanks for subscribing thank you <laughs> um a f1 is like your lead flight attendant or your purser or whatever that you know you probably other words that you're used to hearing other airlines call it um but yeah i'm just being a good f1 and checking the flight making sure we're not delayed for any crazy reason seeing how many passengers customers we have on board and uh, any specials and just things like that i mean they'll tell you all of this once you get to the gate or you can kind of check yourself just to kind of be ahead of the game be mentally prepared for what you have to deal with i don't have to tell y'all how i feel about fort lauderdale yeah so hopefully it's a quick flight um give us i'm praying for like four and a half hours because i'm sure they're gonna work us work us hard so it'd be nice if we can just get there quickly and be done with that um once i get there auntie sandra y'all's favorite auntie from the videos she's selling her house and she's moving to houston hey so i'm gonna see if she'll come pick me up and go hang out with her a little bit see the house for probably w one last time and i also think my cousin is in fort lauderdale too that lives in jamaica i think she's there visiting unless she left already so i get to see her that would be really awesome i haven't seen her in a while anyways y'all i'm gonna do a good little morning stretch wake my body up a little mini like 10 minute workout or something just to kind of get my heart rate up and going um hit the shower and get to the airport talk to y'all all right guys just made it to the airport we have about 15 minutes to get to the gate um what day is today i think today's saturday so i'm gonna eat a little something i made my um what did i make i made my chia seed pudding so i'm gonna snack on that hopefully before these customers get on board because I'm sure I'm going to be ripping and running this entire flight and won't really have any downtime to eat. So I need to get something in my system beforehand. But talk to y'all later. So wishes do come true, guys. I got a... Is this the right bag? Yeah. Oh. Why is this a mess like this? Look at this. Like, I don't know. I'm not, I can't blame it on the crew. And I don't know if it was the provisioning team that did this. But don't leave the closet like this. Like, little things like this. Like, I never leave an aircraft looking a hot mess. Never. Anyways, um, wishes do come true. <laughs> Flight time of 4 hours and 48 minutes. So a little less than 5 hours. Hopefully that'll make the flight just go by super quick. I'm ready to get to Fort Lauderdale. And go get a real workout in that little four minute thing I did this morning was cute but I need to feel like I'm really burning some calories sweating all that good stuff and then um, go see my aunt like I was mentioning so anyways we'll see how this flight goes I could see all the eyes piercing us as we were walking through the terminal into the into the gate all the customers are looking anxious to get on board ready to ask for everything in the world <laughs> so let me finish doing what i'm doing talk later all right y'all just landed in the fll fort lauderdale so hot and humid here <sighs> about to try to keep this energy get to the hotel go to the gym and then go see my family look at how bite-sized this elevator is look like here to there here to there here to there 
okay. I told a fib. I'm not going straight to the gym. Oh, the lighting. Oh, yes, natural glow. <laughs> I'm going to take a little power nap. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to take a little power nap. Stop. Alexia is going to take a little power nap so I can have some real energy for the gym. So I'm going to set my alarm because y'all know I will, oh, I will sleep. I will sleep. It's 442 now. So let me sleep for about a good hour. Probably hit the gym at 6. Go for hour 7 ish yeah all right okay as i'm up i woke up so startled one of those when you took a nap but it was like way too good and it felt like you was like in that good deep sleep i woke up like oh my gosh where am i what time is it, it took me a good 60 seconds to figure out my surroundings <laughs> didn't know if it was today and tomorrow or yesterday anyways Let's go get this workout in. So, love random nights like that. This is still going on. Met up with the family and they just so happen to be at this carnival. So it was fun. My cousin Golda, she doesn't like being on camera. Golda, say hi. Y'all hey. <laughs> met Gavin. That's his sister. <laughs> what is the vlog? Yes. The vlog. <laughs> Tell them to remember me from LA. Y'all remember. It's me, same one, you know. Say hi. Hello. Hey, Hello. This is Gavin's son. at the same time because I'm sleepy I need to get these eyes open anyways it is day three of a four day we are headed from Fort Lauderdale to LAX um, Los Angeles um, and yeah it feels so, like it's human here in Fort Lauderdale but I just really love the weather here I mean I guess it feels like home like Houston so Anyways, we're just sitting here waiting for our um, shuttle to come and take us to the airport. Um, I have a little headache. I think it's because I'm hungry. And I don't know why I'm hungry, but I am. So, anyways, I'll chit chat with y'all once we get to the airport. Oh my god, y'all. I almost told y'all yesterday that Fort Lauderdale is like trying to redeem themselves because our flight to Fort Lauderdale yesterday from LAX was so nice and calm and like the people were great but I said you know what let me hold up until today's flight and I take it all back boarding this flight I was like I gave me instant headache it was so much going on these people are so needy Ooh, so now I'm just like I had to take a minute after we got up in the air and I had to take a minute, drink some coffee, get my mind right before I go back in the aisle with these customers because I got a plaster this smile on my face. <laughs> but oh my gosh, like I don't think I felt like that during boarding in a long time. Long, long, long time. But anyways, we're in the air. I just gave these people their hot towels. Let me go give them their drinks so they can go to bed. <laughs> All right, flight is over. After the boarding, it wasn't like nearly as bad as it started um customers were okay but it was still a little crazy so we're back to for where are we we're back to la i'm about to nap it out i'm done i'm tired y'all the laziness is so real 
I ordered Uber Eats. Um, I did have one. Oh, goodness. I got a little migraine right here. Been having this migraine off and on all day. Um, I get spot migraines. Do y'all ever get these spot migraines? They started when I used to drive school buses. And I used to go around this corner. And as soon as I hit the corner, the sun was coming up. And the, the light would just bing on my forehead so bad. And ever since then, I've been getting these spot migraines right there. Um, anyways, I don't know why I even told y'all that. But <sighs> Uber Eats. <laughs> I had one meal left, but honestly, I didn't even feel like going downstairs to, to the microwave to warm it up. So I Uber Eats it, and he delivered it right to the hotel door. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to eat this. I ordered a poke bowl. Hold on, let me try to get it about this bag. Um, poke bowl. It's basically like a salad. Um, keto friendly, y'all. It's shrimp and scallops, cucumbers, um, with like a vinaigrette dressing or something. Just something to eat. I really did want a hot meal, but chop. I'm tired. One more leg tomorrow, and then I'm off for about four or so, four or five days, and I'm going home. Home. Good morning and welcome to day four of four. We are finally headed back to JFK. It's been a long four days, but I have survived. I need to put my scarf on real quick. I'm non-compliant in this moment. Don't be like Alexia and be non-compliant. Anyways, hopefully this is a quick flight. I'm trying to make a commute home to Houston at 2 for so flight leaves at like 2 30 we're supposed to land at like 2 20. <laughs> who am i joking so wish me luck y'all all right y'all four days over it was long but bearable y'all remember marcus <laughs> marcus is back so remember marcus is the one that put me on keto and i was like i don't know about no keto let me see it she looks great she looks amazing i'm so proud of her so i know y'all been asking me for a keto update so I'm off for the next few days and then I have reserves. So I'm gonna do a keto update during that period just so y'all can kind of see what I've been eating and doing and all of that good stuff. Ooh. Oh, charge your phone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, just want to end out the vlog. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye.